Hi everyone, I recently learned that forecasting can be done super quick and easy in Excel using a special feature called Forecast Sheets. I've decided to give it a test run so that you can judge for yourself its capability and its limitation. Please bear in mind when generating a forecast, Excel uses the data set provided to analyze historical trend and then generate a forecast under the assumption that historical pattern will repeat itself in the future. Let me illustrate what it means by creating six sets of forecasts using six sets of data sets. Something flat, something declining, something growing, something with tooth shape, something random, and something that zigzag around. Let's see what type of forecast output that Excel will generate for us. As you can see, our six sets of data are very different. Some is downward sloping, upward sloping, flat, zigzaggy, tooth shape, quite random in here, very different. Let's see how can Excel handle this and will Excel be able to generate an accurate forecast that resembles the past. Let's get started with our first one. I'm going to highlight column A and column B and click forecast sheets. As simple as that. And voila, our first one is done. I'm going to call it A. And this is our flat line. Let's rename it to F actually, just to remind us this is the flat line. The historical data is flat and the future forecast is also flat. Not bad Excel. First one done. Let's look at the second data sets. I'm going to highlight column A and column C by pressing Ctrl and clicking forecast sheets. And voila, look at that. Downward sloping line and the forecast is also downward sloping. Now notice as well, there is an option to set where you want the forecast to end. So at the moment, the default is 8th of November. And if you want to, you can change that to 30th or you can change that to a different month. Maybe make it 31st of December and you hit create. Voila, that's your forecast. That's the second one done. The downward sloping line, I'm going to call that D. Notice as well, every time we hit and click forecast sheets, a new sheet is going to be created. Look at that. And you can rename these sheets. I'm going to call this G because this is a sales line which is growing. The history is growing and the future forecast is also growing. Let's create new ones. Let's practice more. This time around, let's look at sales S. And again, click forecast sheets. Voila, look at this. This is the tooth shape line. But now we have three lines. What are they? When you click options down here, there is this option to click or unclick confidence interval. The two lighter color lines are basically the 95% confidence interval, which basically means that this is the range where Excel thinks that the future forecast will lie. I don't really like the shape of that, so I'm going to untick that and just show the straight lines. Or not really straight line, just show the one line. Okay, and click and drag up and then hit create and we are done. So not bad. Historical data looks like a tooth shape line and the future is similar looking. So that is sales S. Let's look at more stuff. Now let's look at sales R and again hit forecast sheets. So this is our preview. That's the history, which is quite random up and down, but within zero to a million. Now the forecast look a little bit funny. The forecast is saying likely to be somewhere in the middle or between this lower and upper boundary. So I'm not sure about this one, but I'm going to hit create as well. This is the random lines where when the history is up and down at a random pattern, no particular kind of like direction. That's how Excel is forecasting it. The only one that I'm not sure. Let's look at our last one which is the zigzag line, the Z, and hit forecast. Look at that, that's our forecast, which resembles the past. 
And that's the confidence interval. I'm not sure about that. Why would my line go up and zigzag so wildly? So I'm going to up to untick confidence interval. And then notice as well, there are some other options in here which you can explore, such as seasonality. So far, I have let Excel to detect it automatically. But if you want to, you can set it manually. So you can tell Excel maybe your data has monthly seasonality or maybe quarterly seasonality. And the number that you enter it in here is the points or, or the, the lowest granular level. In my instance, my data is by day. So if I want to do annual seasonality, then I would enter 365. But right now, I just want to leave it at detect automatically and then hit create. And we're done. So those are our six forecasts. So this is Z with our historical data. And that's the forecast. Mm -hmm, not bad. So now you have learned something new, hopefully. Now you know how you can quickly generate a forecast by utilizing forecast sheets function. One thing to remember, when generating a forecast, Excel uses the historical data provided to analyze historical trend and then generate a forecast under the assumption that the historical pattern will repeat itself in the future. So if this is okay for you, then Excel forecast sheet is definitely something that you should explore to create a forecast. But note, if there is no historical pattern, then Excel will struggle to forecast the future as you have seen with our previous random dataset example. Also note, if you know that the future is likely to deviate significantly from the past, then you will need to adjust your forecast methodology accordingly. So please use this feature with caution and happy forecasting. See you next time.